brought to you by WikiVD Documentaries. Night of the Long Knives The Night of the Long Knives, also called Operation Hummingbird or, in Germany, the Rome Putsch was a purge that took place in Nazi Germany from June 30 to July 2, 1934, when the Nazi regime carried out a series of political extrajudicial executions intended to consolidate Hitler's absolute hold on power in Germany. Many of those killed were leaders of the Saar, the Nazis' own paramilitary brown shirts organization. The best-known victim was Ernst Röhm, the Shash leader and one of Hitler's longtime supporters and allies, leading members of the left-wing Strasserist faction of the Nazi party, along with its figurehead, Gregor Strasser, were also killed, as were establishment conservatives and anti-Nazis. The murders of brown shirt leaders were also intended to improve the image of the Hitler government, with a German public that was increasingly critical of thuggish brown shirt tactics. Hitler moved against the Saar and its leader, Ernst Strom, because he saw the independence of the Saar and the penchant of its members for street violence as a direct threat to his newly gained political power. Hitler also wanted to conciliate leaders of the Reichswehr, the official German military who feared and despised the Saar, in particular Rome's ambition to absorb the Reichswehr into the Saar under his own leadership. Additionally, Hitler was uncomfortable with Rome's outspoken support for a second revolution to redistribute wealth. Finally, Hitler used the purge to attack or eliminate critics of his new regime, especially those loyal to Vice-Chancellor Franz von Papen, as well as to settle scores with their old enemies. At least 85 people died during the purge, although the final death toll may have been in the hundreds and more than a thousand perceived opponents were arrested. Most of the killings were carried out by the and the Gestapo, the regime's secret police. The purge strengthened and consolidated the support of the Reichswehr for Hitler. It also provided a legal grounding for the Nazi regime, as the German courts and Covenant quickly swept aside centuries of legal prohibition against extrajudicial killings. To demonstrate the loyalty to the regime, the Night of the Long Knives was a turning point for the German government. It established Hitler as the supreme justiciar of the German people. As he put it in his July 13, 1934 speech to the Reichstag, before its execution, its planners sometimes referred to it as Hummingbird, the code word used to send the execution squads into action on the day of the purge. The code name for the operation appears to have been chosen arbitrarily. The phrase, Night of the Long Knives, in the German language predates the killings and refers generally to acts of vengeance. Germans still use the term to describe the killings, the term given to it by the Nazi regime, despite its unproven implication that they were necessary to prevent a coup. German authors often use quotation marks to write about the for emphasis. Hitler and the Sturm of Tellung Saar President Paul von Hindenburg appointed Hitler Chancellor on January 30, 1933. Over the next few months, during the so-called Gleichschaltung, Hitler dispensed with the need for the Reichstag as a legislative body and eliminated all rival political parties in Germany, so that by the middle of 1933 the country had become a one-party state under his direction and control. Hitler did not exercise absolute power, however, Despite his swift consolidation of political authority as chancellor, Hitler did not command the army, which remained under the formal leadership of Hindenburg, a highly respected veteran field marshal. While many officers were impressed by Hitler's promises of an expanded army, a return to conscription, 
and a more aggressive foreign policy, the army continued to guard its traditions of independence. During the early years of the Nazi regime, to a lesser extent, the a Nazi paramilitary organization remained somewhat autonomous within the party. The Tsar evolved out of the remnants of the Freikorps movement of the post-World War I years. The Freikorps were nationalistic organizations primarily composed of disaffected, disenchanted, and angry German combat veterans founded by the government in January 1919 to deal with the threat of a communist revolution when it appeared that there was a lack of loyal troops. A very large number of the Freikorps believed that the November Revolution had betrayed them, when Germany was alleged to be on the verge of victory in 1918. Hence, the Freikorps were in opposition to the new Weimar Republic, which was born as a result of the November Revolution and whose founders were contemptuously called November criminals. Captain Ernst Röhm of the Reichswehr served as the liaison with the Bavarian Freikorps. Röhm was given the nickname, the Machine Gun King of Bavaria, in the early 1920s, since he was responsible for storing and issuing illegal machine guns to the Bavarian Freikorps units. Röhm left the Reichswehr in 1923 and later became commander of the Saar. During the 1920s and 1930s, the Saar functioned as a private militia used by Hitler to intimidate rivals and disrupt the meetings of competing political parties, especially those of the Social Democrats and the Communists. Also known as the Braunschutz or Stormtroopers, the Saar became notorious for their street battles with the Communists. The violent confrontations between the two contributed to the destabilization of Germany's interwar experiment with democracy, the Weimar Republic. In June 1932, one of the worst months of political violence, there were more than 400 street battles, resulting in 82 deaths. Hitler's appointment as Chancellor followed by the suppression of all political parties except the Nazis, did not end the violence of the stormtroopers, deprived of Communist Party meetings to disrupt. The stormtroopers would sometimes run riot in the streets after a night of drinking. They would attack passers-by, and then attack the police who were called to stop them. Complaints of overbearing and loutish behavior by stormtroopers became common. By the middle of 1933, the Foreign Office even complained of instances where brown shirts manhandled foreign diplomats. Hitler's move would be to strengthen his position with the army by moving against its nemesis, the Saar, on July 6, 1933, at a gathering of high-ranking Nazi officials. Hitler declared the success of the National Socialist, or Nazi, Brown Revolution. Now that the NSDAP had seized the reins of power in Germany, he said, it was time to consolidate its control. Hitler told the gathered officials, the stream of revolution has been undammed, but it must be channeled into the secure bed of evolution. Hitler's speech signaled his intention to reign in the Saar, whose ranks had grown rapidly in the early 1930s. This would not prove to be simple, however, as the Saar made up a large part of Nazism's most devoted followers. The Saar traced its dramatic rise in numbers in part to the onset of the Great Depression, when many German citizens lost both their jobs and their faith in traditional institutions. While Nazism was not exclusively or even primarily a working-class phenomenon, the Saar fulfilled the yearning of many unemployed workers for class solidarity and nationalist fervor. Many stormtroopers believed in the socialist promise of national socialism and expected the Nazi regime to take more radical economic action, such as breaking up the vast landed estates of the aristocracy. When the Nazi regime did not take such steps, those who had expected an economic as well as a political revolution were disillusioned. 
Thank you for watching. Brought to you by WikiVD Documentaries. Please like and subscribe below. Please like and subscribe below.